Platformers in the 90s were being pumped out like there was no tomorrow. With the success of good platformers, developers and publishers were rushing out to put forward their best variation of Sonic and Mario. Sonic had that speed from the blast processing, and Super Mario World captured the hearts of a generation with the launch of the Super Nintendo. But of course, for every Sonic and Mario, you have countless platformers that were just trying to cash in on the craze. So if I showed you this character, you'd be right to think the same for the red and yellow character playing the harmonica. But Plock is, at last, a real hero. And he has to be. At least that's what the manual says. There's not much to the story of Plock. Plock wakes up one day to find out that his flight that was mounted on his house was stolen. He then later returns the flight to find out that his island has been overrun by fleas and that there's eggs everywhere. He sets out to destroy the eggs and the queen. Apart from moving left and right, Plock can slide down a hill by holding down. He can also walk while crouching. Plock's main form of attack is that he launches his hands and feet. If he launches all four of his limbs, he kind of hops around on his head which can be very tricky to control. Plock has a main jump, as well as a spin jump that allows him to jump higher than he normally would. Later in the game, you'll pick up hornet nest pickups that allow you to press X to unleash a hornet on that enemy. Plock begins with platforming stages where you have to reach the end of the stage trying to find his flag on each of the flagpoles. If you pick up a hundred of these shells, you'll pick up an extra life. Apart from picking up an extra life, after each stage you'll end up lighting up one of the four letters that spells Plock. After you complete four stages, you'll end up with an extra continue if you lose all of your lives. The end of the stage that you picked up the last continue is where you'll actually start off from if you have to use that continue. Once he finally finds his flag, the game breaks up to a series of exploration levels where you're set out to hatch and destroy the fleas in each level. This adds an element of exploration to Plock as you're set out to finish an objective before locating the flagpole and completing each level. One other really cool aspect of Plock is that he has a dream about his grandfather finding his amulet that helps you out with fleas along the way. You actually get to play as Plock's grandfather in this like 1920s black and white silent film style gameplay. This actually goes on an entire world and even features a boss battle. Once you do get the amulet back, you can mash the L and R buttons repeatedly, using up shells to power up Plock's amulet. There are also areas in Plock where you have to sacrifice your limbs in order to access different areas. This introduces a puzzle element to Plock where you have to figure out the correct sequence of areas in order to progress throughout each stage. As you sacrifice each of your limbs, you'll have to find them on a hangar somewhere. Now sometimes this will get tricky finding out where to go. Luckily, if you stand still, an arrow marker will appear on screen telling you which direction you need to head to in order to advance. Occasionally, if you find these present boxes scattered throughout some of the stages, you'll take on different forms such as Plocky, the boxer who shoots bigger limbs and has unlimited punching power, Vigilante Plock who can shoot a constant stream of fire at enemies, there's also Squire Plock who hunts down his enemies with his buckshot ammo. There's even another two pickups to find if you look hard enough, Cowboy Plock and Rocket Plock. Leading up to the final boss, you'll get to use even more power-ups in the form of vehicles. One is a unicycle that squirts water at enemies. One is an off-road vehicle that has a rocket launcher attached. A jetpack that lets you shoot lasers and fly. There's motorbike that has grenades equipped. A helicopter that allows you to fly and drop bombs a UFO that lets you fire the plasma cannon, and even a slow-moving tank. The music in Plock is fantastic. It's almost like I can't believe that this was only pulled off by just two composers. The music in Plock has so many different atmospheres. One reminds me of the ghost level in Super Mario World. Another, I mean, just listen to the boss stage as it plays. Front to back, Plock has an excellent soundtrack and is easily one of the finest on the Super Nintendo. The only real downside of Plock is that there's no save file or password system built into the game. You're stuck either leaving the game on or using a save state in order to progress. Luckily there are warps to find if you can shoot the magic fruit on the trees three times. Race to the finish and you'll get to travel to a later part in the game. These can be difficult to find as the fruit also serve for a health pickup. So yeah, other than the lack of saves, Plock is an excellent platformer that belongs in anyone's collection. The thing about Plock is that it got such great reviews from many beloved video game magazines at the time, I'm surprised it didn't feature as a household name. Apparently even Miyamoto thinks the same, and I quote, He called Plock the third best platform game and expressed desire to make it the second best above Sonic. It's almost like if there was a podium of platforming games, it would look like this. So yeah. 
Feel free to leave a comment if you agree with this assessment or if you have a game recommendation for me to talk about. You can also hit me up on Twitter at RetroKingpin or by following the link in the description. I'm the Retro Kingpin. Thanks for watching.